Hello, and welcome to another session of our Mental Health University. Today we have some very important people on the line that's going to share their experiences, information for you on homeschooling. But before we do that, let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Miriam, can you please pray for us? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this another opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for giving us life and health and strength. Thank you, Jesus, for um, teaching us about homeschooling, for what you're going to teach us during this um, conversation. We pray that you would be in our midst. We pray that you would guide us, give us your wisdom and your understanding on this topic. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we have three homeschooling parents on the line with us today, and um, they've been doing it for some of them for many, many years, and some for a very short amount of years. But either way, their experiences will be mightily important for someone who is considering this information. So um, we have Miriam, who's our regular counselor. She is also a homeschooling mom. Miriam, can you tell us how many children you have and how many years you've been homeschooling? Yes, I have two children. I have a seven-year-old son and a -a one-and-a-half-year-old daughter. And we've been on this journey for three years now. Praise the Lord. Amen for that. <laughs> and uh, Rochelle, Sister Rochelle, tonight, can you share with us uh, the number of children you have and also how many years you've been homeschooling? I have um, two children, six-year-old and a two-year-old. And this is actually our first year uh, in the homeschooling uh, process. So this has been very exciting for us. This is exciting. exciting. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And we also have Sister Indira on the phone. How many years you've been uh, homeschooling and how many children do you have? Let me guess, two, right? (laughs) Yes. Yes, I have two children, ages 17 and 12, and we've been homeschooling for 12 years now. Praise the Lord. So various number of years of experience with this um, venture or journey with your children. So let's start with the first question. I think uh, our listening audience might want to know what exactly is homeschooling. Um, And I found it interesting that Wikipedia indicates that homeschooling is educating your children at home or various places, um, and it's usually conducted by parents or tutors or online teachers. Um, and they have their idea of what homeschooling is. In addition to that, there are a range and various ways that people go about homeschooling. Now, there's something called unschooling as well. So we want to make sure that we understand what line of homeschooling we are going to be sharing. Uh, I know France Brother has uh, some information on what homeschooling looks like and the idea of why homeschooling is important from Spirit of Prophecy. Do you mind sharing that with us, please? Sure, this is uh, taking from Child Guidance, and the, the first chapter is called Importance of the Home School, and the session gets into how education begins at home. So this is Child Guidance, page 17. It says, it is in the home that the education of the child is to begin. Here is his first school. Here, with his parents as instructors, he is to learn the lessons that are to guide him throughout the life. Now, the next couple words are the lessons that needs to be uh, instructed to their children. It says lessons of respect, obedience, reverence, and self-control. You know, usually we like to hear the lessons of uh, how how quickly they can read, uh, how quickly they can pronounce words, uh, but we're kind of missing the point of what the lessons that need to be learned. Respect, obedience, reverence, and self-control. The educational influences of the home are a decided power for good or for evil. They are in many respects silent and gradual, but if exerted on the right side, they can become a far-reaching power for truth and righteousness. 
If the child is not instructed aright here, Satan will educate him through agencies of his own choosing. How important then is the school in the home? So homeschooling is the first school. Being mm-hmm. being taught at home is the first school. And the instructors are the father and the mother. And the lessons that need to be learned are the spiritual lessons that has their foundation on the law of God, which is respect, obedience, reverence, and self-control. Excellently said. Um, now, we are not here bashing any individuals who have chosen to send their children to a regular uh, school. Matter of fact, I work in a school system. I've been working in a school system for many years. Um, but we know that if God has something better for our children, we should always explore what is best according to God. And that's, that's the avenue that we're taking here. So um, I want to give the mothers a chance to, to share their experience with you guys as well. So the first question that I would want to ask them is, why did you personally choose homeschooling for your children? Um, Rochelle, you want to start us with this, with this question? Why did you choose homeschooling? Oh, okay. Um, well, there was definitely a number of things that were presented during um, – my son did actually attend K-4, uh, which is pre kindergarten and um, there were a lot of things that the teachers are bringing to us that we felt I guess the more these things were presented the more I felt it personally that I think that my son just needed one-on-one attention and it wasn't that the teacher wasn't willing to you know obviously uh, spend time with him but I think I realized that you know in a school setting, you know, they're there to work with the group as a whole, not my child, <laughs> you know, individually. Mm. And so a mm. lot of the things that I found out later, a lot of the things that they were saying, they were spot on with. But a lot of those issues could, and I found out, could be resolved. Just me personally or my husband spending the time that he needed that one-on-one to learn those basics to learn that. That was one thing. And the second thing was um, we noticed a change in his behavior when he went to school. So I asked him, I asked him, I said, would you like to go to school or would you like to stay at home with mommy? And every time I, every time I asked that question, he said, I want to stay at home with mommy. Hmm. So those two reasons together, you know, um, are the reasons, and there was a number of other things that happened that the Lord just orchestrated, so we were kind of in the position to homeschool. Um, But those two reasons primarily were the the reasons we decided to take the homeschooling route. Oh, wow. So he actually wanted the homeschooling experience with you. He said it for months. Mm -hmm. How old was he when he had this conversation with you? Uh, Probably about three or four months into um, K-4, he told me repeatedly um, he wanted to stay home. He didn't want to go to school repeatedly. Um, and we were like, no, just hang in there. Just, you know, you're having fun. He had a lot of friends at school. Um, but his, his brother also was here at the house. So I figured he wanted to stay at the house, play with his brother. But um, he but repeatedly told us he wanted to stay home. Well, thank you for sharing. Sister Indira, how about you? Um, yes. Why did you choose homeschooling for your child or your children? Yes. Well, in the beginning, um, I had a friend who was um, at a daycare, and she was teaching pre-K, and she invited me to, with Samuel, to come and sit in the classroom, and as I was observing, I was observing that the children were were not being taught, but just to to be followers, and the character building was a a concern of mine, and so we started to pray, and because I didn't know that there was such a thing as homeschooling, so I started Mm -hmm. to research, and then when I found out that there is such a thing as homeschooling, I, I took the leap and went forth. 
And the more I studied, the more I realized that the public school has an agenda, and it was to take God out of the children's heart. And for us who are believers, we wanted them to be well-balanced academically and spiritually. Hmm. Well said, well said. And Miriam as well, why did you choose homeschooling for your son? Yes, my experience was when, um, similar to what Indira shared. When my son was younger, I would say around three and four, I had him in a, in a pre-K, like a half-day pre-K program. And the teachers there were very kind. The teachers there wanted to, it seemed to me that the focus was on academics. They wanted to start um, with some phonics. They wanted the she the teacher was very proud to say that many of the children, once they finish that school, are able to read and can become strong readers. But again, similar to Indira, the character part was not you know was not included. And the Lord has been also showing me and also introducing me to other families that were homeschooling. And I saw a change. I saw a difference in the character of the children that I had met or friends or church family where the children were being homeschooled and just their, their demeanor, their relationship, the ability to relate to people of different age groups. And I saw something different in those children versus the children in the, um, in the public school system. And then in addition to that, in my case, is that I started to notice some of the differences in terms of my beliefs about the state of the bed, my beliefs also with who my son was in. It was not any um, religious in any way. And so um, mm-hmm. some of the differences in terms of my beliefs and the teacher's belief, I saw where little things were being, like, I guess, rubbing off. Um, for example, they had a picture of someone on the wall, and the person had been deceased, and they mentioned something about his spirit being there in the school. So there were some little things that I was not um, not comfortable with because I knew it was in, in contrast to my belief, and so I began to pray that God would help me to teach based on what, you know, as, as God had showed me in the scriptures. And so God, God opened the doors where I was able to do that at age five. Well, you know what, what I found interesting is that all three of you guys actually um, started the idea of homeschooling came when your children were very young. And so almost like the Lord was impressing you very early on, you know, there is a better way or there is something else that you should be doing or pay attention to this, you know. And I thought that was very interesting how, how God does that. So the next question that we have is just, can, do any of you guys have some research on any adults that you might know of that have been homeschooling, and did that at all shape your your view at all on on the outcome, a possible outcome of homeschooling? I know, Marion, you might want to be able to share something in that line for us. Yes, one of the examples that I, I like to share with other, with people is that Jesus was homeschooled. And I said, you know, and sometimes people usually look at me like, huh, Jesus was homeschooled? The Bible doesn't actually use the word to say Jesus was homeschooled exactly. However, the Bible tells us that Jesus was taught at home, that Mary was his teacher, you know, that he learned from, he learned practical skills from Joseph at the carpenter shop, that his mom would read to him from the Bible and from the Bible scrolls and how he learned growing up, you know, through that, from training at home. And as he got older, he was able to learn more and do more with Joseph at the carpenter shop. And he was able to relate to others in the community. So he was able to develop physically and mentally and spiritually and socially. And so that's one example I, I often share with people. And I, usually I get a surprise look like, oh, wait a minute, Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. That is interesting. But very true. Very true. I mean, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think any of us can top that one. <laughs> but um, are any... Are there any research, like state uh, laws, that parents need to look out for, or where where can they get that information? Where can they go out to search information on state laws on uh, this topic of homeschooling, or can just anyone do it without even searching out the state laws? And Sister Andera, do you have any anything on that? Yes. Um, well, the first thing is every state has um, different laws, and there's a website. That is um, it's HSLDA. It's specifically for homeschooling laws in each of the 50 states. 
Okay, can you give me that website again? You said H as in hat? Yes. F. F as in spring. S as in spring. L is okay. in lion. D is in dog. A as in apple. Dot og. Okay. And we'll also put and that website on for other parents who want to see that. Uh -huh. So what, what information can they gather from that website? From that website, you go there and you, you can click on the state that you're in, and it specifically tells you the state laws, what is the requirement, if there is any, because we have few states that require nothing. We have other states that require an intent, a letter of intent, and we have those that require yearly um, evaluation, and we have few states that require um, that they know the curriculum that you're using and they approve it or not. So okay. that is a very useful um, website. Now, I, I don't know if you've gone into searching to see different states other than the one that you're in, but what would you say is the hardest state when it comes to uh, homeschooling based on what you've seen or go into that on that website? I think it was, um, I know that, I believe it was Maryland. Okay. And yes. Okay. I believe and then was, the easiest yes. state or the ones with the least amount of laws? Idaho. Homeschooling. Idaho. Okay. Idaho. <laughs> And okay. Okay. Florida and Georgia are in between. Okay. Yeah, they're a little bit more relaxed because mm -hmm. they only Georgia requires every three years of testing, and Florida is um, once a year. Okay. Now you are in what state, and what information can you share about the state that you're in? Yes, I'm in. Um, the state of Florida, and with Florida, we have to first give a letter of intent, which means that you have to inform the, the school district that mm -hmm. your plan is to start a homeschooling, and you have to do it within 30 days of starting homeschooling. Mm -hmm. And then they require you to do every year a yearly evaluation, which means that you have three choices. Once a year, the, the child or children have to be either tested by a certified teacher who has a license in Florida, okay. and they would look over your portfolio, and or they can test them according to see if they are at a level that they should be academically, mm -hmm. or you can get a licensed um, psychiatrist to do the same thing, or the third one is you could have them tested by the state, whether it's the um, whatever state test that they have. Okay, now I'm, I'm thinking that you're referring to probably the FCAT, the Florida Comprehensive Assessment uh Test, is that correct, or is it different tests? Well, the, the FCAT was um, taken away, so they have something else. Okay. That's why I did okay. yeah, mention the FCAT. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I guess once they contact their uh, public school system around them, they would know what test they would need to take, or the state would provide that information for them, correct? Actually, the, your school district. Mm -hmm. will let you know what zone you're um, in, and then you go to that school that your child is zoned to attend, and they will facilitate the testing. Okay, okay. So in Florida, and I'm sure in other states too, it's not just that you keep your kid at home and you do whatever you want with them. There are things that there are laws that we still need to abide by. Uh, so thanks for sharing that. How about uh, Sister Miriam? In your state, what state and what laws should individuals that are considering homeschooling there uh, need to keep in mind? 
Yes, similar. I'm in I'm in the state of Georgia, and I have, we have similar laws to um, Florida, but just slightly different. Each year, we need to submit a letter of intent. It's a very short and easy, simple um, letter that can be submitted online, just stating that um, I we as the parents intend to homeschool. We have to start submitting letters um, as the age from between the age of six, I believe, six to sixteen, um, and it, it it gives us certain subjects subject areas that we need to cover. However, um, the state is very flexible in terms of curriculum. We, are, um, we parents have the freedom to choose their own curriculum. And testing here in Georgia is required every three years. So for my son, he will start next year at the end of the third grade year, and then we'll be tested again sixth, ninth, and twelfth grade year. Okay. So it's a little bit more lenient in, in Georgia. Yes, a little bit um, more lenient. Now, since you – since you mentioned curriculum, how, how should a parent go about curriculum? I know that's probably one of the heaviest questions on homeschooling uh, moms or parents' uh, mind. Um, how do you go about deciding what curriculum to use for your children if that's the route that you're going on? And I, I guess anybody who has the answer for that one can, can chime in. Um, Sister Indira, do you, do you want to share first? Okay. With curriculum, my first suggestion is to define out what is your goal for homeschooling. What do you want to accomplish? And because there's many different types of curriculums out there. There's, um, there's the Christian-based ones, and there's ones that are unit-based because you have um, different styles of learning. So there is, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to gather my thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is, there is um, study units where they take each subject and they are specific in that area, if that's what your child likes. Like, for example, if your child likes um, marine biology, you would do a study unit in that specific area to guide them in the interests that they like. Or okay. you have other curriculums that are just like the school, the public school system that um, goes day by day very um, on a schedule. Mm -hmm. You have to accomplish certain things in the day. Yes. So I guess I guess one of the important things, too, that you mentioned is you have to know what is your goal for homeschooling. I think that's very important. Um, how about Miramat? I think you used something a little bit different um, as well. What, what, what curriculum did you decide on, and how did you decide on that curriculum? I'm not sure. Did we lose Miriam? Hello, I'm I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Are you can you can you hear me now? Yeah, we, now we can hear you. What curriculum okay. did you decide on, or how did you decide on the curriculum that you're using? Yes, uh, on 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 my end, I was really I I met someone who worked with a Christian uh, Bible based curriculum, um, and so I just really felt I really you know believe that God was really really leading me to that person, and that curriculum mm -hmm. is actually called Sunlight Education. And it is mm -hmm. completely Bible-based and nature-based, um, teaching children from pretty much from zero up to 18. And so that's okay. the one that God, I believe God, you know, led me to. But like Indira said, you know, once that a parent really sees what, you know, what their main purpose is and what their goal is, um, there's a lot of curriculums out there that are, you know, connecting, tailored to different needs. Okay. And how about you, Sister Rochelle? Do you have any... Um, suggestion on curriculum choice or the one that you're using and how did you go about that? Well, really, um, when he was in K-4 and we were having a lot of things that were going on, I started searching for different curriculums. I, I started asking just parents that I, 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 I knew around the area who were homeschooling. Uh, where we live, um, the homeschooling program is Abeka. Um, it's mm -hmm. developed just down the street. And so uh, it was Abeka and some other programs that I was looking at, and we ended up going with Abeka. Um, some of our church members were using that too, and um, it has been absolutely phenomenal uh, for my son. 
He's very engaged. He absolutely loves his teacher. Um, and it just, at the end of the day, my son is happy. You know, um, I can tell his love for the Lord, and that was a big thing for us, was that it was, like Miriam was saying, was Bible-based. That was very, very important to us. Um, and so that's why we like it. He likes it. Everybody <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds like he's liking it for sure. He's liking something. <laughs> oh, I want to yeah. debunk. I want to debunk a myth really quickly because I know I've heard that said before by some individuals who are considering homeschooling, and maybe you guys can give uh, some suggestion on that. Do you have to be a teacher to homeschool, uh, or <laughs> what? Do you need to have a background of education or having gone to school of some sort? to be able to homeschool? That is a question that I've heard many people have and a fear that a lot of parents who are considering homeschooling have. Who, any one of you guys might want to share that? Are you a teacher by trade, or did you have some background information in education, and that's why you chose that avenue for your, your, your children? Uh, let's go, I guess, with an assistant, Dara. Okay. Um, my background is math but I do, I do not have a teaching degree. My example came from the mother of Jesus. Hmm. She, she was um, led by the Holy Spirit to teach Jesus in all aspects. And I believe that when we're homeschooling, we do have that fear. You know, are we going to be able to adequately teach our children, but if we have faith in God, God will teach us to teach them. There's many things that are out there, the, the curriculum, the Internet, and the Bible that we can impart knowledge to our children. Nice. And were you afraid at all in the beginning? Yes. Yes, I was. Um, I was afraid because I didn't know, I didn't want to, in the beginning, I was thinking mess up the child, (laughs) and I didn't want to ruin his education. That was my first fear. And then as I was reading Timothy, about the story of Timothy, how his mother and his grandmother taught him. Mm-hmm. It gave me confidence. And then the more I read about Jesus' life and the more I educated myself by researching the different types of curriculums, and it built my faith to know that with God all things are possible. And all he needs is Indira to be a willing vessel and to show up. And also, the fear of failing is something that I had to overcome also. And by God's grace and mercy, I thank the Lord that he has done such a wonderful work that the fear is, is not there. Nice. And I, I also recommend that we also surround ourselves with other people who are homeschooling because iron sharpens iron, and we need That's that right. support system to encourage one another. Thank you. And, Miriam, are you a teacher or – have the background of a teacher? Yes, I'm not a teacher. I'm, I'm not a teacher. And early on um, in the journey three years, I would say about three years ago, God really showed me, similar to Sister Indira's testimony, that as, as God calls us parents to teach our children. And God doesn't say we have to have a master's degree or a PhD in education or any of that. And he promises that any Anything that we're lacking, like, for example, James 1, verse 5 to 7, is a Bible promise that I claim all the time. 
I'm like, that says, um, if any of you lack wisdom, let us ask of God who will give to all of us liberally. And so when I'm lacking wisdom and patience for that day to teach the children, I ask God for the wisdom. When I lacking patience, I ask him for the patience. When I need guidance, I ask him to guide me. And I truly believe that um, God is God's commandment, and he will make a way for us to be able to keep this commandment and to train and to teach the children according to his way and his principles. Amen. Well, well said, well said. So what are some of the challenges that you guys have at home with, with the whole homeschooling uh, venture? Rochelle, do you want to share on that? Um, sure. I, I actually wanted to back up just a little bit because <clears throat> I actually wanted to answer your previous question. In oh, terms go of, Yeah. Um, I personally am not a teacher. And to answer your question, um, for the people out there who might – be nervous about homeschooling uh, with the particular, and I, and I know every program is different, um, but most programs uh, give you the option, at least as a parent, and I'm, I'm speaking this generalistically, obviously every program is different, but you have the option as a parent, and I know for me being new, do I want the full responsibility of teaching? So the program that we chose, you have the option, option one, you can teach everything yourself. All of the information is provided. All of the books are provided. Everything that you need is available for you to teach your child. That's option one. We did not mm. choose that route. Okay. Option two, <laughs> I'm just being honest, first year. Option two was the facilitator route where our child has his own teacher, and but we are there with him in the classroom. It's kind of interesting. It's it's me and my husband and my son and, you know, it's all four of us, you know, usually there in the classroom with him. So as a facilitator, if there's any questions, ooh, okay, let me clarify what the teacher is saying. This is what she's saying. So we can be there, especially from the big biblical perspective, you know, to provide extra insight. We're there to provide insight, to correct, to explain. So we're there. Um, in terms of being a facilitator, I'm hands-on. I'm showing him this is how we handwrite. This is you go up, you go around, you smile, you back. So we're there as the facilitator. So even though I'm not a hands-on, you know, in terms of teaching every single class, I felt like this was a better route for us for this year just because we didn't want to be overwhelmed. So for those people okay. out there who are considering it, you know, you have the facilitator route where your child has their own teacher, and then you have another route where you do all of the teaching. So those are the options, at least maybe Indira and Miriam can provide more insight, but those were the options that were available when we decided to start this journey. Um, I also want to share something, too, mm -hmm. uh, about regarding your question. Um, in, the, in the book of Judges, uh, the story of Manoah, uh, it was interesting how uh, when, before Samson was born, uh, he asked the Lord the, the, these questions. Uh, this is in Judges chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, mm -hmm. O oh my Lord, let the man of God which thou dost send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. Because they're trying to figure out what, how, how are we supposed to raise this child up. And then he says the same thing in verse 12. And Manoah said, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child and how shall we do unto him? So I don't think Manoah was a teacher either. He didn't have any kind of background. But he went and entreated the Lord of how he should order this child that he's about to be received, that he's about to receive. So uh, if you don't know how to raise your child, entreat the Lord. And how do you entreat the Lord? You can find it in his word because his word will teach you, will lead you, will guide you on how to order the child and how should the child be raised. Very well said. Very well said. So the question on challenging, <clears throat> challenges that you face 
what are some challenges have you guys particularly faced uh, with raising your, or your child with the homeschooling program? Um, Rochelle, I think you were going to share on that first. I was, yes. Um, you know, I think one of the, the most challenging thing for us is, you know, um, I, I've been home for my son's entire life, so I've always been there. But we've been very unstructured, very, very unstructured. And um, the program, the Abeka program, is very structured. You know, it's a very intense program. Um, and so at the beginning, finding that balance, <laughs> you know, all of a mm-hmm. sudden my son goes from complete, you know, unstructured, you know, and just kind of carefree to this very structured program, you know, there was a, there was a huge, it was a, it was a learning curve for like the first month or so um, in that whole process. And also we were kind of transitory at the same time we had just moved so there's a lot of things happening where it just made it very difficult to just have some quiet time to sit and try to, okay, we're just going to sit here for 15 minutes and have your first class. It was very, mm. it was very difficult. So the biggest thing for us was finding that balance, that finding the balance with, you know, with a child. One thing I've learned is children need structure. You know, they need mm-hmm. routine. Same thing every day, 8 o'clock, this is what you do. And so that, took a, that was a process, and it took a while for us to get there before we realized it. So that was the biggest thing is trying to find balance to go from complete, you know, completely unstructured, and then all of a sudden we have to get back into this routine of structure, and this is what we have to do. We have to get through all of these classes in one day. And at the beginning, you know, we weren't able to accomplish everything. Most of the time we were just doing half days because it was just it was very intense. So that was probably the biggest oh, wow. thing. So structure yeah. definitely was needed, and absolutely that helped with the program being there to give you guys that structure that your um, son actually needed as well. He did. Absolutely. Okay. How about some, some benefits? Sister Ndera, you want to share some benefits of homeschooling that you found? Yes. Um, one thing is, one, you, with our daughter, she was, a late reader. And the benefit of homeschooling her was taking our time and not pushing her. And we, it was like one day it just clicked and all of a sudden she was reading. So whereas in the public school there's so many students that the teacher cannot concentrate on certain individuals that are falling behind. So if she was in the public system, she would be really, really behind at that time. But it's Mm -hmm. amazing that working with her, that one-on-one, it was like overnight, it was such a a pleasant surprise just to see her um, say, no, I will read. And she just read. And so that one-on-one and also building relationship with the child. It's not only just teaching academics, but it's teaching life lessons. We go Mm -hmm. through home economics where I incorporate math, but also learning how to cook and also learning how to communicate because she has to, both of them, they have to relate back to me what, what they're doing in the cooking process. And mm-hmm. so they're learning so many different skills at, the, at one, um, in one course mm-hmm. and also character building, even going into nature and explaining where we can find God. God is found in nature. And seeing when their eyes lit up when they finally get something. And I don't have to rush them because that was one of my mistakes when I first started homeschooling. I was so 
gung-ho on making sure that they were academically um, grounded, that in the beginning, even though I wanted character building, that was falling on the side. And then the blessing, the benefit of homeschooling is the Lord showing me that um, I needed balance. And seeing the children grow into spiritual um, individuals is a blessing. Mm. And I know you have uh, an answer, too, for the challenges. What are some challenges that you saw? with your experience with Endura? Well, in the beginning, with pushing them academically, I found that they were being more of followers. And then, then when I changed course, the Lord showed me that they need to be thinkers. They need to be able to reason for themselves. And... When I redirected the homeschooling, it was, um, it was beneficial to all of us because then I saw the children not being so stressed with worrying about taking a test or anything. Now they can not memorize, but they can think things through and mm-hmm. also learning in this environment that it's okay not to succeed all the time. Sometimes we're going to have um, roadblocks, and what do you do when those roadblocks and those difficulties come into place? How are you going to handle it? And it's teaching them, preparing them for adulthood because Mm -hmm. that's what they're going to be faced with when they get out into the world. Wow. You know, a, a thought that came to mind as you guys were talking is for, and I'm, I'm constantly thinking of individuals that I've talked to and they're wanting to do this or they think that this is intriguing, but it's not impossible for them in their minds, in their words. Um, how about some uh, financial uh, sacrifices that you guys have to make? What are, were there, I mean, did you guys have the liberty to just, you know, quit what you were doing? Was it easy for you guys to do that? Or was that something that you guys had to think about and process um, to be able to, to make this happen for you guys? Um, I mean, are you guys financially stable to be able to do this? Does a parent have to be financially, uh, you know, well off to be able to homeschooling. Because so sometimes people think that homeschooling is, you know, a lot of rich parents sitting around at home with their kids. <laughs> they take them to these various places and amusement parks and all these kinds of things because they have the money to do that. How, how, how are you able to debunk some of that uh, idea that people might have on finances when it comes to homeschooling? Um, I don't know if anyone, one, one of you guys want to share on that one. Uh, Rochelle, do you have anything on that? Well, I was going to say, um, in general, sending your child to school, I mean, if you're sending your child to a private school, it's a sacrifice. But in terms of deciding, because for us, you know, we knew we always wanted to send our, our child or children to a Christian school. We knew there would be a sacrifice. Um, but in terms of the cost, uh, homeschooling was a fraction of the price compared to if we were to send our child to a Christian school. I mean, okay. there's no comparison. I mean, substantially cheaper. Um, I want to say, what, 20% of what it would have cost for us to send our child to school, to the Christian school. Mm-hmm. So substantially. So there's no comparison in my mind, in our mind. There's no comparison. You can't even compare price. Um, to homeschool as it is um, to send your child to the school because you have to realize when you send your child to school, they have to pay for a teacher. They have to pay for for the facilities. They have to pay for all of that. So your costs are going to substantially go through the roof when you send your child to a Christian school as it is to homeschool. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was already home. I mean, it it wasn't that much more 
to consider homeschooling. So for us, we were willing to make that extra sacrifice to say, okay, let's just okay. let's just homeschool and and see see you know see how this year works out. And so far, we've absolutely um, loved it. <clears throat> to to go back and answer your other question in terms of what are the benefits, you know, mm-hmm. for my son, the biggest benefit was his self confidence. You know, he's he's a very quiet person, but to see that blossom, to see him become more confident, and then to turn around and start teaching his brother, you know, and he, he, he's very proud of it, and he's teaching, now he's teaching him how to read, you know, he's very proud of the fact that, no, that's not what it is, and they'll sit down and read a book together, you know, and he loves that, and he, you know, he's a big brother now, and he's very confident in his role as a big brother, and I believe it came from homeschooling. I really believe that. I think there's a, there's a joy and there's a happiness, you know, he loves the Lord, and 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 I believe his his teacher and, and and obviously we do as well. You know, she she you can see she talks about that so passionately. You know, and so that is shared with his joy with his brother and whatever he does with him. Nice, M- Miriam. How about you? Were you always a one household income? I um, mean, so it was kind of easy for you to go into tr- the transition of homeschooling, or what was? The sacrifice. Yeah, in my, did you have to make any sacrifice for that? Yes, in my in my household, we were we originally started off being both of us working full time outside the home, and then I transitioned to working part time um, outside the home. And God just really truly made a way. Like Rochelle said, the, we we wanted Christian education, so private school. Speaking with some of the some of the other parents in my area. I want to say about like 400, the cost is like $400 a month for tuition. That's not including the special uniforms and the books and supplies and school lunch and this and that and different programs and things like that. So I, 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 I'm sure that the amount and even, for example, in our, the curriculum we use is a free curriculum. So there's so many different um, ways that I, I see that the cost is nothing compared to what it would cost us to send our children to um, Christian, a private um, Christian um, education school. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would definitely, oh, go ahead. Yes, but I, I, in my case, I do work part-time outside the home. I've even met some, some, some families, for example, right now, my son is getting music lessons, piano lessons from a teacher. She's also a homeschooling parent, and she's able to do it at home while her daughter is, you know, right there with her while she does some, some lessons on a part-time basis. So I'm seeing some other parents also trying to find creative ways to make it work and even gain some income at the same time. Nice. nice. Um, I would like to answer that question. Go ahead. Uh, yes. It is a sacrifice for us as a family. Um, I do not work. And financially, we had to decide what was important. And our children's education and their, their character was more important. So we had to sacrifice certain things. So... Like when things come up, we have to save up for them because that is a reality. Money is um, a part of life. And so you have to prioritize where you're going to spend the money because you're only living on one income. And some, sometimes it's very tight. And by God's grace and mercy, you have to live on on a tight budget, and the Lord will show you creative ways how to do things. Like in our area, I live in um, Florida, and I live close to an area that is very affluent. And so what we do is for field trips, we find ways not to spend so much money. Mm -hmm. And... The library is a beautiful place to go to read books, to borrow books. There is nature places that we can go to and learn about animals and things like that. So when people are afraid to start homeschooling because they said that they don't have money, we have to remember 
Mary, the mother of Jesus, they were not rich. But yet they, um, they were happy and they were satisfied with what God gave them. Perfectly well said. You know, one of the most concerning topics for parents considering homeschool is the idea of social skills. And as a school psychologist, um, you know, I want to share that kids come to school, not all kids come to school automatically having the ability of great social skills. And, and likewise, there are kids who come to school already, they have that good social nature, they're very sociable, even before they came to school. Um, and I found it interesting that the, the, the definition of social skills is skills that we, uh, that we use to communicate, to interact with each other verbally, nonverbally, through gestures, uh, body language, personal appearance. Those are social skills and ways that we can communicate our messages, our thoughts, and our feelings to others. And also displaying good manners is also part of social skills. And I found it interesting that, you know, what Brother France read earlier, those are all about character. The whole idea of social skills, developing a social skill for children, is to teach them social skills. And it doesn't have to be in a school, formal school environment for a child to learn social skills, of course, um, being that kids come into the school with it and they come, some come in without it. And also, likewise, I see kids graduate and they still don't have the social skills. And, they see, and I see kids that graduate out of the school and they have the social skills. So what made the difference is that some of them learned and developed their social skills. Um, and the ways that parents can teach their kids social skills is through service. That's the best way to really learn how to relate to other feelings, how to genuinely, not in an orderly fashion. Um, what happens in the school is everything is so um, programmed in a sense. And so that's why you see kids line up. You hear the bell, they just automatically line up. Uh, uh, or they stand up in a, for the Pledge of Allegiance every morning. Those are routine things. And they, are not need, they need not to be confused for social skills. They're just things that they were taught to do very routinely. Um, and so that's not social skills. And also uh, another uh, thing that I want to debunk uh, myth is that social skills is only developed with their peers. There's nowhere in the Bible does it say that a child has to be around kids their own age or a, pe- a person their own uh, uh, um, you know, age to develop social skills. There's nowhere in research do you see that either. It can be with an elderly. Social skills can be developed with uh, an older person or with your parents, just like we see, and we talked about Jesus several times already in the conversation. So social skills, developing social skills is not about being same peer-to-peer relationship. Yes, kids can develop friendship uh, because they have interests, the same similar interests with people. But when it comes to social skills, let's not get that confused with uh, giving them a friend, you know, or, or play date or whatever they call it nowadays. So social skill development is one that, that kids can develop and learn as they go about service, not just in a school environment, behind a desk, you know, to, to do the things that are already routinely done in the school, that they learn to program uh, the kids to do in school, like there's a time for this, there's a time for that, a uh, time for lining up. Those are not social skills. Those are programmed, skilled, um, and it has nothing to do with character development, which I found that social skills is very linked to character. So um, if, if you're saying that we're developing or you're developing your children's character, in essence what you're saying is you're also developing their social skills. You're developing their communication with one another or with, with people in general. Um, they would not always be five-year-olds. They would not always be seven-year-olds. So you're not developing them to be seven-year-olds. You're developing, them, uh, developing your children to have the character of Christ and also to be uh, good citizens in our society, to bring souls and to help um, uh, share this message that we have as well. So I just want to make, you know, that distinguish between social skills and age peers uh, um, relationship and also service because ultimately social skills is about developing a child's character for service or through service. 
as well. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. And also, I know, Mary, I don't know if you wanted to share more about social skills or um, some concerns that uh, homeschools might have with social skills, uh, skills, developing their children's social skills. I, I agree with you 100%, <laughs> and that's one of the differences <laughs> I've seen in children that are homeschooled versus kids um, in the general public school system. Many times they can relate only amongst themselves and not with others. And one beautiful right. experience I had was I had a beautiful experience, I want to say about two years ago, where my son and I were volunteering at a church, and he was able to form a very close friendship with a, one of the um, um, senior ladies at the church. I believe she's about 75 now, but they would play hangman, they would play tic-tac-toe. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, in the general school setting, he may not have had that experience. And just to be Correct. able to see that we can all have commonalities, we can all have similar interests, we don't have to be in the same age group. <laughs> That's right. And, and again, That's right. Again, with people, people who are different and relate and have conversation and build relationships. That's right. And this, this idea of same peer, peer relationship age group came actually as a result of our school system. Uh, mm -hmm. Before, kids were in a room with a number of kids of different ages, and they were playing and teaching each other, just like you were saying, uh, um, Rochelle, that your son is teaching your younger, your younger son. That was the uh, original plan that, they, that was established. But ultimately, the plan is not for us to just have kids in one group for them to talk with each other. It's about how, can they relate when they go out in front of kings and queens and, you know, popular polit politicians uh, to make a difference. And it should not be based on their age. It should be based on their ability to have self-confidence, to share information, um, to relate to people's feelings, to, to share thoughts. Um, on different levels with different people. So I, I definitely I, I felt impressed to share that thought with you guys because even in the school, um, you know, I see a lot of kids with various, you know, diagnoses. They might have autism or they might have a whatever, uh, uh, they, have, they lack social skills in the school. And, and sometimes I don't see the teaching happening that needs to happen in the school. It's just they have a label. And so we, we want to make sure that we do not get confused about social skills or get frightened when we hear uh, others talking about kids uh, lacking social skills um, because they didn't go to, to regular school. So I just wanted to share that based on, you know, my experience having been working in the school for so many years um, that this is something that needs to be taught. And I know we're running out of time, but I just want, to, uh, want you guys to share on one or two important points before we close out. Um, do you guys have any advice that you would want to share with parents contemplating homeschool? Sister and Daryl, you want to share that? Okay, yes. The first thing I would always advise is to pray first. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide us in the direction that we need to go. And after prayer, research. Research your state laws and requirements, um, figure out how you're going to, what curriculum you want to use, um, what is your goal for homeschooling. Ask yourself all of these questions. And one thing that I've also learned, too, was to have a designated area for homeschooling. It's amazing how it gives structure to the children because you're home. So it, it gives that little area to them to concentrate and to know that this is, this is school. This is where I have to, to do my schoolwork. They don't have to be distracted by anything. And the area doesn't have to be a, like a designated room or whatever, even if it's the dining room table. At least they know that that's where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. and, and also to know that it doesn't take a lot of money to homeschool. You can um, find things in your area, see what the county, the school is doing. Sometimes they have free programs. The library has free things also. 
and you can plan your field trips around these different things. And one more thing, it's good to get involved with other homeschoolers just to encourage one another. And also sometimes it's nice for the children to get together and to, to do projects. Okay, and I just got the signal that it's almost time to leave, but I want to just ask that last question. Any regrets or anything that you guys would do differently? Rochelle, you want to give us some, um, some thoughts on that? And then we'll do our quote, uh, last quote. Okay, I think my biggest regret, um, if I can call it a regret, is that when we started, I think I had the idea in my head that since he's homeschooled, we can travel and we can do all of this and, you know, it's not a big deal. But my biggest thing in terms of schooling is that remember your child is in school. Your child Mm. needs to, if you start the day at 8 o'clock, don't say we'll start at 11. No, if you start the day, if you're going to start at 8 o'clock or start at 9 o'clock, have a schedule for the child so the child knows, okay, school starts at 9 or 8, and we finish at 2. And that was my biggest regret. I didn't do that. I was like, oh, well, we're, we're homeschooling, so, yeah, we can travel to you know, Tennessee or Kentucky. No, and he can be in the van. No, no. <laughs> it doesn't work. Good thought. Good thought. School, travel on, during summer vacation. So that was a big thing that I can pass on. <laughs> Brother Franz, do you have any last thought or, or or phrase or something for parents out there who are listening to this conversation um, might want that you might want to share? Uh, sure. Um, I'm going to share something from Genesis chapter 18 and verse verse 19. It says there, for I know him, and this is Jesus talking, or well, God talking to Abraham. He says, for I know him. Those are the, the first words in the, in the verse. And I would love for each household for God to say the same thing and for God to say the same thing to them. I know him. And then it says that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken uh, uh, of him. And the first thing we, uh, we need to do is to know the Lord. Know him with all your heart, soul, and mind. And, and as you know him, he can say about you, I know this mother, I know this father, that he will command his children and his household after me and we could say those same words as Joshua said as for me and my house we will serve the Lord uh, recently I shared last last week I did a, a short sermon about are we sacrificing our children to the devil and by the things they watch by the places they go uh, by the people they interact with we have to be very mindful of the things we place in front of our children because being a father or a mother is a very high calling and we should be very tender of how we treat these children because it's teaching us how God treats us. Like how when, when we have a bad view of God and give that to our children, then they go out through life uh, having a mindset that God is against me because we're not giving them the right, correct character of who God is. And this is, the, this is so important, so crucial, that as parents we need to form the image of God in our lives to show our children who God is. And God is love. God is completely love. So my appeal to parents, if you don't know what to do with the child, ask the Lord, as some of them said, pray, do a schedule, uh, read child guidance, read Adventist home, read the word of God, like read a proverb a day. There's so much wisdom in the Proverbs that can help you develop the skills that you need to teach your children. Thank you so much for that. 
Um, I just want to thank Miriam, Sister Miriam, Sister Rochelle, and Sister Indira for being part of this conference call. Um, we're going to close with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for the information that you've given us to share. I pray that someone will be blessed with this information. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.